fellowships and exchanges. Maybe we can start with you, Bill. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, like everybody else, I would be remiss if I didn't pay homage to the initiator of this wonderful event. Thank you so much, Cordell. <laughs> My experiences uh, have been largely in the uh, academy. I'm an academician, an itinerant academician, as you might be able to tell if you look at my mind. And uh, over the course of uh, several years, I have uh, had the wonderful experience to teach and research and be an administrator in several universities uh, across the U.S. And I'm currently serving as the director and the CEO of the Nubius University in the Latin America. My path to uh, this particular location has uh, been one that certainly has been supported by my participation in fellowship activities, which I think is something that is really, I think, important to anybody who is interested in moving into a leadership position, irrespective of what the area of endeavor might be. For me, it was an opportunity to identify and expand my networks, and obviously that's important for anyone who has aspirations of moving up the ladder in whatever your field of endeavor is. Once you've expanded that set of networks, uh, the benefit for me is what I call PPI. You enlarge your set of perspectives by uh, your engagements with your professional colleagues. You are allowed to enter into conversation with people who have different points of view. And out of those perspectives and points of view, you get insights about your own work about your own area of expertise and uh, have an opportunity to grow and be professionally enhanced by the challenges and the opportunities to have those discussions. Those discussions, uh, conversations lead to an enhancement of your reputational growth. You now have a better sense of who you are as a professional, what kind of work you want to do, and as a result of that, you begin to distinguish yourself from your other colleagues, which in turn then gives you the opportunity be identified as someone who has leadership potential. That leads you into another set of networks that, competes, that continues the circle all over again. So the prospect of engaging in fellowships is just a wonderful aspect, I think, of professional development. In the academy, and perhaps in other areas as well, it's not necessarily something that somebody put on the checklist. OK, what am I going to do to get to the next division? Uh, maybe I'll take a seminar. Maybe I'll engage in some kind of professional development. But the opportunity and uh, the wonderful activities that are provided by fellowships can, in fact, again, lead you through this process of expanding your network, expanding your perspectives, becoming a person who has leadership identification and potential, which then plugs you with additional networks, and you just go on and on from there. So I think it's just a, an overlooked uh, aspect of professional opportunity. I think it applies across all professional fields, and I certainly heartily supported for anyone who's interested in moving to the top of their profession. Well, thank you for that. Mr. what's your perspective? Well, first, like everyone else, Cordell, you're amazing. But when you have an amazing human being that has this idea, somebody has to put it together. So I actually want to thank his team. Um, you can see that we're attacking very of how amazing his team is. Jacques was over here talking about cryptocurrency. I'm messing up my PayPal to register. And I was like, thank you, Catherine, for fixing this. So um, I thank you all for having me here. So fellowships, my first involvement was, honestly, my boss saying, man, you should consider this leadership loud thing, right? There's a leadership something in every community county. And it was her, like, introducing me to this universe. And now here I am sitting working for the Hinden Crown Fellowship, which uh, for the Aspen Institute is a flagship fellowship. Um, if you remember from the uh, preach preach off last night, the mayor of Rhode Island actually referenced that she did a leadership program, and that's what gave her the, the ability to strengthen her public speaking. And then they encouraged her to be mayor, and so on and so on. So that's the, the leveling up that fellowships um, and these opportunities can provide. Uh, specific to my fellowship uh, is we work with entrepreneurs, founders, C-suite individuals from ages of 30 to 45 who have considerable success in the private sector already, but are looking for that give back. So in my role, my fellowship looks at the um, social impact, right? How to transform you as a leader, how to put you in these opportunities. And my job is to connect you with other individuals that can help scale you, scale your business individually, your, your venture, your project, your societal impact. Um, so it's, it's not just about you, even though it transforms you. It's what you're doing. It's that legacy that you're leaving when you're not here anymore. 
Although Esther, I didn't stop you because oh, no. um, while we were preparing for this, she gave this amazing example. So I'm going to put you on the spot to give the example about the chef. Um, uh, yeah, so our, our fellowship is, um, we're primarily US domestic based, but we're not industry specific. So in this particular class, we have a chef. And she's sitting in the room with the you know, owner of this company or the CEO founder, blah, blah, blah. And she stood up and was like, I really want to work on you know, my, my speaking and, and um, public profile. And I will be, I will speak for any of your companies pro bono. And they quickly checked her and was like, no, you won't. Our companies have line items to pay for speakers. Don't offer yourself as pro bono. Offer yourself as your skill set and we will pay you for that. Right? So it's changed that mindset of, of a chef who's not coming from that same corporate background. If she can level up, but she doesn't have to zero her worth, right? So as the uh, young adults were saying yesterday, pay me what I'm worth. <laughs> you, you can do that. And this was like the encouragement of being in this room and this peers. Because they're sitting at their table, just like all of us, and they're all equal. But sometimes you need that level of encouragement to look at something in a different lens that, that helps you further your career as a chef in this case. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I love these examples and these stories because it really is lived experiences. Hi, good morning everybody. I'm Jennifer Clinton. I'm the CEO of Cultural Vistas and we facilitate uh, fellowship and internship opportunities at a global level for um, university students and young professionals. My story, my connection to this is a very personal one. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan and um, in the 70s and 80s where it was not, a, like globalization had sort of devastated the city. So we did, I didn't have a lot of exposure to um, experiences, you know, abroad leadership development experiences, but I did play sports and I, at 14, I had the opportunity to uh, travel to Sweden uh, to play basketball. And um, at that time, like my family didn't have very many resources, so I had to go around selling candy bars to to uh, fund my, my experience um, playing basketball there. And so fast forward to now uh, in my 50s, I've spent my whole career providing opportunities for young people to um, go abroad and participate in uh, internship fellowship opportunities. And it's been a life's calling because I believe, you know, as Bill and Esther both said, that that, that experience changed my life. Um, it gave me a, a totally different perspective. Um, it, it, it put me in the shoes of other people that helped me understand and navigate difference, um, but also had that connection to, to humanity. Um, and now my role is really about developing uh, an ecosystem for young people to have these types of opportunities. Um, building an infrastructure, working with individuals, working with corporations, and really society to unlock um, young people's potential, you know, like, like mine was. Um, but you know, instead of having people go out and sell candy bars door to door, I think we as a community and my, my sort of life's mission is to uh, provide resources, provide an infrastructure, provide you know, networks and leaders to really commit to um, bringing people along that just don't have, have the opportunities. So um, I'm really happy to be here. And you know, from, from my own experience, um, too many people have left, been left out of these experiences um, because of systemic barriers, because of their own beliefs of lack of confidence that they see themselves in these. And um, I, 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 want, I want us to change that. Uh, I want us to reach, reach into communities that um, normally just don't have uh, these opportunities. So I'm really happy to be here and talk to you about this. Wait, can you talk about the candy bars? 